Hi, this is Gary and in this video I will show you a little tool called Density Scout. It is a very simple entropy analyzer for threat hunting and incident response. The entropy in a file tells us how close the file content is to random. The higher the entropy is, the closer it is to randomness. Density Scout uses density instead of entropy just to avoid philosophical disagreements on this topic. For the sake of that, I will also use density instead of entropy from this point on. In Density Scout, the lower the density, the higher the entropy is. So we are looking for files with low density. To be honest, I don't really understand why low density would make more random and high density make less random, but this is how the tool works, so I will just stick with it. Normal files, whether text, uh, documents, executables, or anything else, usually have some kind of structures and patterns in it. Thus, they will have a high density. Compressed and encrypted files have low density. The whole point of compression is to remove redundant patterns. So where you have thousand zeros, you can replace it with thousand times zero, which is much shorter. This will decrease the density. For encryption, the whole point is to make the content unrecognizable. So where we had thousand zeros, we want something random so that nobody can tell that we had some kind of pattern there. Of course, this really depends on the par particular algorithm you're using. So Density Scout can look for files with compressed or encrypted content. Most Windows executables are not encrypted. However, a lot of malware will use a packer that will encrypt or obfuscate the binary. So Density Scout is good for looking around in a file system to find potentially malicious files. All right, let's first download it. It can be found on the side of the Austrian cert at cert.at. There's both Windows and Linux versions. I will use the Linux version, so let's download it. Once downloaded, we can extract the file and open it in a terminal. I will just copy and paste the path uh, into my terminal. There, if we go to the 64-bit version, we will see the executable. A quick tip, if you're analyzing 64-bit systems, use the 64-bit version of Density Scout to avoid the wow effect, so W-O-W. There's a paper about this on cert.at as well. Now I give the file execution rights so that we can run it. chmod 755 density scout. As I mentioned, the typical scenario to use density scout is in threat hunting and incident response. So you can either run it on a live machine that you're analyzing or on a collected file system dump. I will go with the file system dump because I extracted some malware samples on a Windows machine and added the copy of its virtual disk to this Ubuntu machine. As you can see, it is mounted under my media folder. Of course, it doesn't really matter how you acquire the file system dump. The point is that you can mount it and look into it. The simple but slow way of running the tool is just run against the whole file system recursively without any configuration. So let's type density scout minus r for recursive slash media slash Gary, etc. And run. This will take a while. For me, it took quite some time and it had a lot of results, most of which is probably false positive. That is fine if you have a lot of time, but if the case is somehow time sensitive, then you might need to configure the tool a little better so that it runs faster. So let's try that. Density Scout minus R minus S. I will explain it in a second what all this means. CPL exe DLL minus P 0 0.1 minus O slash TMP slash Density Scout results dot exe. And home carry etc. users Alice. So with minus s we will analyze only files with the CPL, exe or DLL extensions. With that we are basically focusing on executables. With minus p and the number 
we can tell Density Scout to uh, print files that were below this specific density right away when it's when they are found. This is basically just to get a quick result. 0 0.1 is a good number just to focus on packed malware. And minus O will output the final results to a text file so that it's easier to analyze. We got a hit which was the raffle.exe. So at this point, you won't probably focus your investigation on this file. Of course, be ready for a couple of false positives. And just because Density Scout says that it's a potential malware, it doesn't really mean that it's a malware. It just say, says that it has a low density. Now we can look into the full results uh, in the file that we saved. The list that was printed because of the minus P parameter that wasn't ordered, it was just uh, printed as the files were found. But these final results are always ordered by density. So the interesting files should be on the top of your list. In this case, I know where to look. That is why I scanned the users folder. But you can create some quick one-liners to do fast analysis, uh, like looking through the system32 folder. That's a good starting point. And of course, Density Scout is a very limited tool since it is looking for a particular attribute of a malware. If the malware is not pegged or it doesn't contain anything encrypted, then it's not going to find it. I hope this video was helpful for you and you will be able to use Density Scout in your assessments. Comment below if you know some interesting tools you want to learn about. And if you like this video, then subscribe to my channel or check out my online training courses. Otherwise, happy hacking and see you next time. Bye.